Goedemorgen, morgen, goeie dag. Goedemorgen, goeie morgen. Blij dat je weer van morgen zag. Goedemorgen, goeie morgen. Goeie dag, iedereen. Dank u wel dat ik weer mee mee mag lopen zien en dansen. Hello everyone, hi. Uh, I continue my podcast with wonderful people. And today, today we started our podcast with famous Eurovision 1971 music song uh, because my guest actually from Netherlands and she knows a lot now about Netherlands, Belgium, and actually she studies Dutch. But originally she's from Ukraine and it's Marina Vorobyova, whom I know for many years. She's a professional uh, psychologist, licensed professional psychologist from Ukraine. She specializes in uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, especially in eating disorders. Works mostly with women and teenagers and children. And why I'm saying it's a very unique guest because Marina originally from Ukraine and she lived in Ukraine until the war started. The topic of our conversation would be about how to solve an extremal situation. It's a serious topic and I don't want this topic to be like too serious for you even if it's like important to know some and get some some advices from professional psychologists. Okay, Marina, hi. Hi, welcome to hi. my podcast. Yeah. So I would like to tell you more about Marina, how we met. And uh, okay. if you know expression, follow your dreams. This is what happened to Marina. Because she was following me. I'm not her dream, but she's following me for many years, just as a reader, as a follower. And she wanted to work in my team. And Marina will tell a little bit more how she got this position because she's in my team. She still is my team. Even she's like independent psychologist, independent specialist. Marina, please tell it. Yeah. Uh, I met you first uh, on the internet <laughs> uh-huh. uh, when I was pregnant by my first child. Uh, I'm trying to find some information about pregnancy, about uh, is it normal or is it not normal? And I found uh, a Ukrainian doctor from Canada uh, who writes. Uh, very clear, very honestly about everything uh, what is happening in Ukrainian medicine, and I'm trying to uh, trying to know her better. So uh, I subscribe to all your channels mm-hmm. and start uh, just reading, 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 and uh, listening. Uh, then it was on uh, Klubcom. It was yeah. Uh, where, where I started my group of women, pregnant women, and who planning the pregnancy. Yes, yes. Uh, then when I has already read a lot of uh, articles and I had your books, uh, I was pregnant again, uh, and uh, have uh, some questions also, and uh, asked you again, <laughs> and I get all the answers, and uh, uh, I thought. Uh, Oh, uh, it is so great. Maybe maybe one day we will meet with this doctor. <laughs> uh, then I you. saw, yeah, then I saw that you were searching for um, SMM manager in your team. And but I had, manager, yeah. yes, I, I had a very little uh, girl, my Emma. Uh, she was too little for, for me to have a new job. So I thought, hmm. Uh, I would be, I would be happy if I get this position, and I forget about this. Um, years gone, and then I saw again. Uh, m- my sister found this vacation, which we met. Uh, uh, I met your sister in Lviv during conference and during yeah, yeah, a yeah. lecture <laughs> of some event. My sister, yeah. my sister met you first, mm-hmm. and then uh, she uh, sent me this vacancy. 
yeah, um, advertisement. And I yeah. and, and I just try, just try to apply, and uh, and and now I'm here. <laughs> And actually, when uh, you applied, I got another 50 applicants, like another 50 people wanted to get this position, PR management and also SMM management manager. And uh, you had less experience than they had. And uh, that's why you were surprised yeah. that I chose you. But I like your personality. I, uh, I, I could see this power and desire to be progressive. To And you were you, you an honest person, I know even following you on Instagram and some other pages, I know you now even better. So I'm very happy you became part of my member. And I just, I would like to, to, to I would like to know people who watch us. I'm not paying her for this podcast <laughs> because I treat Marina as a individual, like independent individual, a specialist. And before the war, she and her husband, also psychologists by education, right? If I'm not mistaken, uh, they yes. opened the clinic in the city where they live. They were quite successful in this business until the war started. And then they got in an extreme situation, which we're going to talk. And Marina is a psychologist, but imagine that she's the mother of two children. And she's a woman. She's a human being that wants to survive. So, so we, we're going to talk and we're going to get some advices from psychologists, but also like from mother, from human being, how to survive in this extreme situation when it comes like unexpectedly. So I would like you to tell a little bit more about what happened when the Russia attacked Ukraine and why you have to flee the Ukraine and now you live in Netherlands for almost a year and a couple of days. Right. And if we if we're gonna cry, so just you have to understand us that's very sensitive topics even for us because I'm Ukrainian and we wear in Ukrainian shirts just to support Ukrainians who went through this and um it's it's a tragic and dramatic part of Ukrainian life now. So Marina, tell what happened actually, how you reacted as a mother and uh what you use um in your rationalization, when you are, like, you know, thinking where you have to leave this uh, city, why you have to leave to save life of your children, even your husband still stays there, cannot leave Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, first, uh, I should see, say that uh, I didn't expect this. No uh, Everyone, uh, yeah, everyone was talking about... Uh, uh, oh, maybe it will be a big war. Uh, everyone uh, thought to where to hide. Uh, but I thought it, it shouldn't be a big war. How it uh, just, how it will be? It's not uh, real it's at 20, all. It's 20, sec, it's 21st uh, uh, century, right? So how it could be yeah. like this? Mm -hmm. I, just, uh, I just thought that... Uh, we we can't be real enemies, <laughs> something like that. But but then when it starts, uh, it was early morning. My son should uh, and my and my daughter yes they should go to school. Oh, but I just opened the Instagram before uh, getting them up, and so that uh, the war is started. Yeah, and I was shocked. Because uh, I didn't see uh, nothing, I didn't hear any anything, so I just thought, "Oh my God, what to do now?" Uh, I didn't uh, think about uh, to run away at that moment. I thought that uh, everything will finish very fast. It it's not possible. I thought. <laughs> and probably because uh, you live in a city that was not wasn't bomb, bombed uh, by Russians at the beginning, it's uh, they were bombing Kiev, Lviv, yes. and some other big cities, not the, the yes, smaller. But uh, but we uh, the day we decided to make some uh, some uh, to buy some things, uh, some food. We went to the uh, supermarket and we saw the. That something is burning, uh, so uh, 
not far from our city, it was uh, an attack. So we saw a bit. <laughs> and um, yeah, and and uh, yeah, in the first day, then it was like um, everything is nearly okay. Um, uh, we tried to help, tried to volunteer a, uh, a bit, uh, um, and tried to hide when it was um uh, alarm. So it was it was strange. Um, I thought I thought about maybe we should uh, move somewhere, maybe in Ukraine, in some regions, uh, maybe uh, on western part. But uh, my sister, <laughs> she lives uh, in Odessa, and now she she is there. Uh, she said me, oh, no one will uh, will touch your city. Uh, no one need Nikopol. <laughs> the Nikopol, uh, you, you will be safe. You, you shouldn't go away. It's okay. Um, then at fourth of uh, March, uh, Russian forces they get the um, they got the um, the Parisian nuclear power plant. And that's uh, I try to that's I want to explain to some people that if you look at the map map where is Nikopol. It's just very close to atomic station, like nuclear power station. And it's they start manipulating, they start using uh, the, the fact that they are occupied, the station, that they can create explosion. And Ukrainians remember, and I remember about Chernobyl um, disaster. And uh, we still have in our memory what happened in Chernobyl. So we know what's what could happen if uh, the plant would be damaged and um, if even more serious things could happen to entire world, not just like to Ukrainians, uh, how it's happened during Chernobyl explosion, because we remember how many European countries uh, had to deal with the rad radioactive clouds and it's serious, it's, it's really serious. So we had fear that it could be devastating for Ukraine for entire world. That's why we start screaming that we need to do something. Everyone had to unite, to be united and do something. And imagine that Marina was living with her little kid just across the lake where the uh, station seven is. kilometers. Seven kilometers. You can imagine seven kilometers. It's just that. So that's why when the time came, uh, Marina was thinking about relocating and I was and I am uh, with her every day in contact and I remember all these moments how we ask her to leave how we ask her to to go somewhere and hide herself and children and, and the husband but it's easy to say relocate it's extreme situation where to relocate if you have a family no house no apartment no money and you cannot take a lot with you when you have to relocate. I, I would like you to talk, even as a psychologist, how to make this decision and right decision, how to not be helpless or hopeless, but actually make decision to save not just your life, but life of your children. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we can't say what is the right decision and what is the wrong decision. But when we uh, when we should decide, we should understand that any decision we will make, it will be right decision for us. Yeah. Just for this moment, we decided that it is right. Yes, then we we can think that, oh, maybe I shouldn't do this. But uh, at this moment, it is the right decision. And you should decide anything if you need, just to decide. And uh, I decided to go away. So... That's all. Uh, it was hard. Yes, it, it was really hard. Uh, I was alone uh, with my kids and the cat. Uh, and we were very, very lucky that we met one man from uh, The Hag, when we are uh, now already. And uh, he brought us here uh, and very, very fast. 
uh, not like some people <laughs> went through countries for uh, seven days or even more because it, it's really hard uh, to, to get some, somewhere. And I think in about uh, not to stay in Poland, I think I should go as further as I can because... <laughs> And how many days you you have, you spent for relocation? Three or a little bit more? Uh, two two and a half. Two and a half, and uh, it's it's really very I would say rapid change in your life, and um, especially if you don't have enough sleep, if you have to think about children's health, and uh, I can understand what you went through, and it's wonderful that you met some good kind of people who decided to help you and help you even with relocation, with finding the place to stay in uh, finding some food, finding some clothes for children. And uh, this is probably was the most, the, probably the most difficult moments of survival, I guess, when you're alone and you worry about life of your husband, he stays, still stays in Nicopol. And I know even in this situation, you you before the war you were helping and you were volunteering for some animal shelter. So your mm -hmm. husband took all cats he could, and actually your apartment became like shelter for animals, especially <laughs> when the Russians start bombing your city too, and many yeah. houses were destroyed, and um, the businesses were closed. But he still lives with the cats helping to survive animals as well yeah yes and uh, it is uh, it is interesting that the start of the um, bombing my city the start was on my birthday i remember yeah and when you uh, expect... i had a little party near the lake here with my friends with my new friends here and uh, we were uh, we were not not really happy, but we were smiling a lot. We were singing. We were like it, it was okay. Uh, and my husband called me, and I say, "Oh, we're near the lake." Uh, da, da, da. And he said, "Yeah, and we are, uh, and our city is uh, under shelling." And I was just, <laughs> yeah. I was shocked. On my birthday, I understand that. No. That it's no, I made the right decision. Yes, you made the right decision because you're responsible as the mother for two children, and even you cannot unite with your husband at the moment, but still you keep you keep in contact with him constantly. It's difficult because to be in a country which actually I remember you dreamed to be in Amsterdam. Remember you told anyone to move probably to Amsterdam, and suddenly you are in Amsterdam first, and then you move to another city which actually your dream came true, but not... In not a, yeah, not in that way I expected. What I see is through the year, and I'm telling it because I follow in Marina like every day. I know what she's doing, and we're corresponding, we're chatting. And what you're doing, like you see, you... Uh, right away, you start helping people who came to um, Netherlands and... You were given some advices, and then as a psychologist, you start talking to people. And you did a couple uh, podcasts. You did a couple. Um, you recorded a couple videos to help people, uh, especially Ukrainians who were coming to different countries and were kind of hopeless to find something because they didn't know Dutch. And now you started the Dutch. It's not easy. <laughs> I know. It's not in the language at all. <laughs> Especially after English, because uh, the correct order of the words is different. Uh, and I know you're helping now women and children. So you uh, you work at school and uh, also you're dealing with psychology of teenagers and children, helping yes. them. Uh, yeah, helping them uh, a lot. And uh, this is what actually amazed me that you never stop. And you actually never be a victim. You never said to me that you're a victim of something, victim of war, victim of... Uh, you're always positive and always like uh, looking for opportunity to help other people, which is amazing. So you never stop mm -hmm. helping people. And also you support women, 
you support some different genders groups, you support actually people to be who they are, which is amazing. And uh, now when we look through this uh, stages of your relocation and adjusting to a new life in a foreign country, so we have absolutely different feelings, I think, and different emotions and different perception of what's going on. And as a specialist, as a psychologist, what can you say, like how we should react like during this transformation period when we come in from something really dramatic in our life, but adjusting uh, less dramatic, but still dramatic life in other countries, in other language, having no education, uh, like European education, right? And again, losing your clinic, losing your family in some way. The first that uh, everyone need to realize uh, that uh, every extreme situation will end. Uh, sometimes the situation is end or sometimes your emotion will come to, to normal, uh, to usual level. Because we adjust uh, but, we adjust in ourselves to yeah, yeah, yeah. an extreme situation. We, mm -hmm. we just uh, yes, we're learning to cope with it and somehow it is solving. But um, in this moment, when everything you, you think you are losing everything, that your life is ending or something like that, you should understand that this situation will end uh, at any time. Uh, and, and what you should do, it's just uh, breathing. It's just uh, trying to help someone just to make your, um, okay, your perception a bit uh, more uh, widely. Uh, you shouldn't concentrate uh, that everything is so bad, that uh, I'm, I'm in so bad condition or... Uh, it's hopeless where, will, where yeah. will i leave what will what we will do uh, because you won't have the answer in this time it you will be uh, just uh, anxious and uh, devastated and uh, thinking about what can be but it, it uh it can never happen what you what you had think about so, so uh we, we don't create negative scenarios. This is very important. Yes. So we have yes. To, yes. We should stop thinking about something bad. But if we cannot, we don't create negative scenarios. We just like concentrating on present, even if we don't know what's going to happen in future. Yes. And uh, you should concentrate not on your feelings, not on your thoughts, especially negative thoughts. Because you uh, at this moment, you don't know uh, how the situation will solve so mm -hmm. no no one knows this mm, even the situation is really really bad maybe do you uh you are losing someone or you are losing your home you just uh, staying and watching like your home is uh, on fire uh, all you should know that it will end somehow and you and your life will continue anyway of course you can go to this burning home and everything will end very fast but uh, usually yeah usually your life will continue and uh, you shouldn't just stay in this grief and lost uh, you should think about how to live then after this situation will finish uh, try to find someone who can just uh, stay near you and maybe uh, just shake your hand, just shake your sh shoulders and say that uh, I'm here, I will help you. Just just to uh, feel your yourself good in this uh, <laughs> situation. You, you can be really good, but... Um, you will feel that someone is near you, that someone will hold you and someone will help you. And it's a wonderful thought because even if, okay, some people need the support and if we are witnesses that some people going through a very difficult time in their life, 
yeah, and just shake the hand of this person, hug this person. Even if you're silent, just like hug, that it helps more better than just be kind of like ignorant and mm -hmm. think, okay, it's 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 not happened to me, so why should I care? Uh, my friend, she lost her house, like when you tell, like here in Canada. It's um, there was something inside that with electrical wires and the house, but now just you know now, and she lost everything. And she was immigrant from Bosnia, going through this Bosnian war. So she lost again everything, everything. And I remember how she was crying, but we support her a lot. And then step by step, she recovered. She's like even happy now because her family, uh, she's her family is okay. Her house is okay. Uh, she got some stuff she lost because she bought some scent and people brought her some scent. Her house is rebuilt. So life is continuing. But I remember that moment when it happened, she just was crying. She couldn't believe it. And she was thinking it's the end of the life. And yes. she said, no, it's not the end of the life. Just like, you know, no, you, you have you shouldn't us. shouldn't think uh, in this way because yes. uh, this is like... Um... Mm, this is not a good uh, a good idea, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to make these bad thoughts in your head, uh, these thoughts will appear. It's it's okay, yeah. yeah? Uh, but uh, you should not think about what will be in the uh, uh, future. You should think about what can I do now. What should I do now, for feeling safe? uh to survive just now uh you, you don't know what will be in the future uh you already lost your past so you have only this current moment and you should live that current moment also when i came here uh i had lived every day like separate day uh that i have for now i didn't plan anything um, I tried to not to think about uh, coming back or some or uh, some uh, plans about uh, work about I just uh, I just try try to focus on what I have now and what I have to do to survive to help my kids. Uh, it's it's like a plan for, you know it's like a plan for day or or a week just uh go to the doctor uh what are the plans um go to school meet subscribe to school yeah, yeah go to the grocery so you just uh live your life here and now and then when you uh when Ready. you uh, become more st stabilized you will see the opportunities. Then you will just uh, find out that something has changed, that you can go uh, go somewhere with kids, that you can change your location, that you can find new job, that you can learn language, and and a and lot you of can new, find new friends. And you can yes, find you new can friends. meet uh, you can meet new friends, and sometimes. It will be like really curious <laughs> situations. Uh, uh, I met uh, one of my new friends in a uh, veterinary clinic. When I came there with my cat, just to make some documents, uh, I met there a girl and she, uh, here like we are talking with my kids, we were talking about something and she asked, oh, you you can understand me and i can understand you <laughs> and we met and uh, we are still in touch and uh, she's my friend it's now wonderful. it's wonderful yes also you uh you will find new friends you will find new job even you will find new house and new life and your children will speak new language and uh, everything will will be but not in a short time all you can do just to keep your uh, mental uh, health in a good condition wonderful wonderful and i'm glad that you're sharing this uh because uh, many people live in 
countries like Canada, United States, in some European countries, and hardly understand what's going on right now in another part of our continent and uh, the, about this war, because whatever they see, it's on TV, it's a short message, it's news, nothing else. But um, Ukrainians, they're not complainers, and we're not complainers, and we're quite a strong nation, I would say. But at the same time, we need understanding and we need support. And people who were relocated, and not because they, they left Ukraine, because they trade or something else, because they have responsibilities in front of children, in front of family. And it's not easy to be in another country uh, and start everything from zero without even knowing when the war will be over, what happened to the city. Um, if the city would be destroyed and then what happened to the houses, like it already happened to many cities destroyed by Russians. And uh, I never wish anyone to go through this, what millions of people went during this last year. And it wasn't easy, I know, because I have my relatives there too. And I have my friends and my colleagues, and it's not easy. But we would like to stop this podcast, like finish this podcast on a good note. So what would be short message to people? Again, even if you were given messages about the survival in extreme situation. You just should understand that life is going on anyway. Uh, you you also can be anxious, you can be worrying about everything, but life is going on. And you can spend your life on uh, anxious, on uh, grief, on um, negative emotions, bad moods, but you also can spend your life on something better. It's just your choice of what to concentrate on. And if you can't... Uh, find some possibilities you are feeling very bad you even can't uh, go uh, just uh, can't wake up and ca can't go somewhere to do something um, even you can't clean uh, around you so maybe you should uh, ask for help exactly. don't be scared to ask for help if you need this People should understand that other people cannot hear your cry for help if you're not really asking for help. Yes. You can cry inside. You can say, I feel bad. Kevin, nobody's helping me. But say loud, help me, please. Say it just loud that other people can hear it, not guessing how you feel. And then you will not be offended that nobody reacts on your, this kind of dramatic situation because yes you you don't you don't say help so say help and if you hear from other people the word help me please even without please because in a, in a, some situation you forget to say please just yes. help me it means this person really needs help and ask how can i help you in some situation you will not be able to help personally but at least you know some people who can help you know yes. some organizations they can help. you can just help this pe uh, this person to get to, to the doctor as a person yeah. yeah that's it and it would be a great help it was the beginning of chain reaction when other people start coming and help marina thank you very much for this conversation it's i know it's not easy to talk about this i was almost crying uh but anyway uh i'm glad that you are here because you are not just like imaginary psychologist, imagine a person who give advice is how to survive. You went through all this and it's even difficult to imagine what you went through. Uh, and you survive and you're a strong person and you now going ahead, you start helping even more people. And I'm really thank you that you came to my uh, podcast. And if somebody from my viewers and listeners, I would like to help Marina, I'll provide more information. Uh, in information about this video. So you're welcome to support Marina and her family. You're welcome to help her too, even with a good word. Thank you, Marina. Thank you for inviting. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Look at this. Who's here? This is Sonia. 
Sonia, hey, hi. So this is my relaxation. We are kept lovers. This is mine. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Sometimes when I record in the podcast or lecture, she's coming here right away and trying to kind of get some attention from me. Okay, bye-bye. Ничьяка месячная зоряная ясная Мы, но хоть голки сбираем Выйди, коханая, працею зморена Хоть на хвилиночку в рай Хай! Хай!